So let's take a look at a really nice feature in Pages that really helps support learning of your students. It's a great way to enhance their access to things. Um, and it's a great way to be a little bit more creative as educators as well. So I'm gonna jump into Pages on my device. And I've just put together this like basic idea of, um, you know, I might be teaching the water cycle. And on this page, you know, I've got this drawing to show what the water cycle might look like. But the thing is, as a still image, the water cycle is a bit, okay, there's lots of things going on on that page. Um, so what we can do here is actually have this drawing animated. So I'll just quickly play this through now and you'll, you'll see what I did, the idea. So as I've drawn this, you can see the builds happening as if, you know, it's just recorded what I've done. And it might seem like, you know, well, that's going to take you a long time to be able to create these drawings and then turn them into animations. Actually, the process is really simple. So I'm just going to walk through it now in a very, very quick kind of sketch of what the water cycle looks like. And the other thing is it doesn't have to be done live. So even though that video, you know, looked like it was, I draw this, draw this, draw this, you don't necessarily have to do it at speed. You know, you can take your time to think about, you know, what do I want to have? So I'll draw some water in here. I'm then going to make it look like the water is going up and, you know, I'm not recording the screen or anything. Well, I am recording the screen because I'm recording this for you. But I am just drawing this as if I'm doing it naturally. Just playing around with the different pens. So probably should have done the sun before the water going up, but you, you get the idea. Um, I'm drawing some clouds. I've noticed a couple of times I've tried this now. My clouds look like UFOs. Again, you get the idea. So then I'm going to talk about the process. You know, they those clouds would move along. And actually, sometimes it helps if you say the process in your head as you're doing it. Um, and then the rain's going to fall. And that's going to fall on the land. I'll do a nice bright green. I have my land running down. And then just, I'll quickly colour that in just so you get the idea. And I'm doing this a little bit quicker take your time um, and then that water is going to form into rivers that flow all the way down um, and then my final touch was just the kind of circle element to show us a cycle so we tap done because i've got a drawing above it's going to merge slightly so what i'm going to do here is actually select my drawing and i'm just going to separate that out so that i have just my drawing here and then at the top, once it's selected, tap on the paintbrush and then make sure you've got animate drawing turned on. You can choose the length of time that that plays for and you can loop it. That's a really nice touch actually if you're doing it in one of these kind of student um, textbooks that you might want them to work in or text slash exercise books because they can, they can both learn from it and write in it at the same time. And now when I tap on that image itself and tap on draw, you'll see that it goes through that process. Oh, I missed a couple of bits when I was selecting it. And you see that it's actually going to play through as that cycle. So you can see how that works. So that's kind of just the, you know an approach that you can do from a teacher point of view. I can create something which walks through a process. You could do this for, you know, I, th I think lots of things in science for this where you can show the process. You could do this in maths where you show the process. Take a look at another example quickly. So this is um, a volcano example. So again, similar kind of idea. I've got a book that I would want the students to use, and this is from the students' point of view. I want them to kind of show the, the stages of a volcano. So again, um, I'm using an Apple Pencil. If you haven't got an Apple Pencil and you're using a normal stylus, you can access that through the plus, make sure on media and drawing. If you've got an Apple Pencil, you can just tap the screen directly. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to say that step one um, is that uh, we might have the plates start to overlap. And over time, you know, that's there's this buildup of lava underneath. I'm really roughly doing this just to just to sh share the idea. Um, and that's obviously going to start to grow into our mountains, etc. But we still have all of this lovely hot lava underneath. And then that starts to get hotter and hotter. I kind of feel like I'm doing this as like a, an actual video. Now. I'm not actually teaching people, by the way. <laughs> I'm sure I'm probably making mistakes about how a volcano grows, but I'm just trying to show the process. I would say that that 
you know, heats up, starts to go to the top, etc., etc. Okay, so now I've got those as videos. Now, again, at the moment they're selected as one. So if I play that as an animation, you'll see that it will play through. Oops. It will play through from that image as I've grown it there, as I've grown it there, and then the final one. And again, you can play around with the speeds, etc. So it's just a really, really nice way to kind of bring an extra touch. Now, I haven't recorded my voice with them. So the final thing that I would say is on each one of those, you would probably want to do a record audio. This is stage one of how volcanoes um, are formed. The plates start to merge over each other and that causes the rock to go upwards. Again, apologies to any geography teachers um, if I've completely butchered the explanation but I just want to show the example. So now I've got my drawing as it grows and I've got my audio. So we're just allowing students to be able to access and share their learning in a variety of ways um, to bring things to life and to utilize the power of iPad and pages in order to really create something quite dynamic and personal to the student. So there we go, have a go. And I'd love to hear in your comments any ways that you think this could be used in your own subject or your schools.